can't say a clear connection between these two pieces of information. Oh, by the way, uh, because I am so kind. Let's see, I think there's something I can look at here. Ah, uh, watch out for the teacup fragments there, sir. But killer's going to pay. This tea set. Yikes, you're really mad over this. This tea set is very dear to my heart. And can only be brought in bought in England. It costs more than your whole month's paycheck. What? No, like I feel like the killer wasted one of my monthly paychecks. <laughs> It's a good thing that my steel samurai jaw was spared from any harm. Speaking of which, I still haven't actually sat down and watched any of that show. What's it about again? Well, I don't know much about it myself, but the hero of the steel samurai warrior of Neo Tokyo is the steel samurai, and his goal to defeat the evil magistrate. It's a show geared towards kids. <laughs> However, the, its high production values and riveting plot joys in a number of adults as well. Spin-offs like The Pring Princess, Fury of Little Old Tokyo and The Nickel Samurai, along with a deluge of merchandise and even a new stage show gives it presence. You... you sure know a lot. Are you sure you're not some sort of rabid fanboy? Of course not. Anyone that keeps up with society at least knows this much. <laughs> and that conversation lasted longer than I expected. Let us return to investigation. Uh, I think there's another thing in here somewhere that is kind of funny, but... Oh, it's your trophy! Uh, Knight of Prosecutors, right? King! King of Prosecutors. And it's not a trophy, it's a shield. They, they only send this to winning prosecutors, right? Yes, but I have no real interest in being pursued in the, the perceived worth of other people. As for my own worth, that is something only I can determine for myself. That's so slick, sir. I'm gonna have to try that say that sometime. Unfortunately for him, his monetary worth is still tied directly to his worth to me. If someone can see what's going on on your screen from this like tiny thing here. Uh, I guess it wasn't here. <clears throat> I hope we can solve this safe case quickly. I'd like to re return to relaxing on the sofa. <laughs> that place looks a billion times softer than my mattress at home. <clears throat> can, can I sit on it too? Just for a little while, sir? <clears throat> Is that a gumshoe? You know I cannot rely on that. <clears throat> Until this case is solved, neither of us has the time to rest, let alone... Time to spare, let alone rest. <clears throat> You're right, sir. I'm going to work real hard and become a real trooper in the end, to the end. Even once this case is over, I don't think he can afford to take any time off. Oh, whoops. Uh, right. a double check. Uh, um. There is a possibility that the files splayed on the floor are not the result of a struggle between the victim and his killer. Oh? You mean like it could be from when the killer tried to find something, sir? Precisely. We need to figure out what, out if any of the files have been stolen. Uh, yes, sir. I'm gonna show these files like you've never seen before, even in the library. Uh, sure. Let's give that a try. Why do all the good ones always die young? Surely you must ponder that every once in a while, Mr. Edgeworth. 
<clears throat> no matter how much we lament, the dead will not come back to life. All we can do is search for the truth. And so what are we supposed to do? How are we going to go about finding the truth? First, we calmly restore the fast to the rightful place. You got it. Let me, here, let me help. So, uh, this file goes here, that book goes, goes there. You sure know a lot about the things where things go, despite it being Mr. Edgeworth's office. Because I'm the one who keeps it tidy, pal. Okay, done. <coughs> It would appear that the murderer definitely co was committed here. Ugh, the blood stains on the bookshelf are still fresh. I suspect that the victim was killed in a standing position, hence the print on the shelf itself. And then the guy fell to the floor, right? And the blood kind of came gush. The, the blood on the floor is kind of grossing me out. Detective, I don't even have the time to deal with your weak stomach right now. Oh, but you know, I'm not good with blood, sir. I'm certain there's something wrong with this picture. Well, yes. Um, this is what's wrong. Uh, yes it is, because he was shot through his stomach. Eureka! Eureka! There's clearly a contradiction here with this bullet hole. What do you mean, sir? You don't see? Quite simply, the bullet hole itself is too low. If the victim was shot in the stomach, the hole should be much higher up. <laughs> the Eureka, the way he says it, or... Eureka! shot while I was sitting or lying down, sir. That would be illogical. The victim leaned against this shelf here after being shot. Oh, the Eureka. <laughs> or... Which suggests that he was sh uh, standing when he was shot. Okay, fair. <laughs> then that means... Wait, what does that mean, sir? It means you need to use your brain every once in a while instead of mine, detective. In any case, it means someone made a, fa a faulty assumption. And it was from this mistake that our current contradiction was born. What is a faulty assumption that caused this? Uh, the order of the files. I believe you know what should, the order of the files is a bit off. You mean I put them back in the wrong order just now? Hey, actually, I think the labels on these files are wrong, sir. Oh? Yeah, you see, here's how the... Uh, you see here how the, the files that were shot begin with the number zero? What I was doing all the way down here? After one, two, and three, that's really weird. Actually, the way they are organized now is the correct order. They're exactly as I see them in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all in the order. Uh. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> Cannot unsee. <laughs> Those white binders are special, so they're arranged a little bit differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the charm occurred. Aha, so that's it. I believe the killer made the same incorrect assumption as you did, detective. Let's rearrange the file in numerical order and see what we find out. Do you think it'd be okay to prop the body back up? Uh, to report how it was before it was moved. They finished processing the crime scene, so I don't see any why it should, wouldn't be. If you please, Detective Gumshoe. As I suspected. 
The bullet hole is now where it really where it logically should be. The killer went through my files first before shooting with a fake. And then put the files back in numerical order, I guess. Exactly. And then proceed to shoot the victim. <laughs> now, now, pigs. <laughs> but why would someone kill a man and then look through the files one more time? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown in disarray to Twitter twice. Once before and once after the crime. Why? <laughs> Now, the crime scene as it was at the time of the murder, Tom will give it another look. Well, the big thing that stands up here is this one. Th this! What's that? What does that go say gumshoe in their own blood? I'd say it's some incredibly incriminating evidence. Yes, indicative of criminal activity indeed. No, wait, there's gotta be some kind of mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me! Say something, sir! It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is that all, sir? What about me and my situation? Is this what the killer was really after? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Looks like Jim was able to leave us with the name of his killer in the end. And this most important message managed to reach us. I I'm telling you, it wasn't me. You can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. If you're going to accuse the detective Gumshoe of being a culprit, I sincerely hope you have some proof to back it up. Jim's words, they're more than enough, wouldn't you say? If that's how you want to play it, then at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it! I like this one bit. There's something strange about this man's attitude. And there's got to be some sort of flaw in his logic for me to dig out. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you going to do? I'm always doing court. I'm going to cross-examine him. One way or another, I'll expose the flaw in his logic with his technique. Oh, how do you do that? Can you explain it to me, pal? Sir? Uh, some other time. Mr. Portman, if you are ready. Oh, if you don't have time, you can just say so, sir. Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed, the, had committed theft instead. That's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. <laughs> but thanks to that, you didn't notice the body bloody letters his body was hiding. And it will be as final words that you, you, you will be brought to justice. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message points to his killer. I can hear Jim's voice and it's calling for his killer's arrest. <laughs> Are you sure you don't miss her hearing his words, Mr. Portsman? There's no way that Detective Gumshoe is a culprit here. I'll find a flaw in this man's logic and expose it with the credible evidence. <laughs> um, so we have some things here. Uh, first of all, uh, only one shot was fired, so this is one thing. Yeah, the gun is standard issue, that's one thing, definitely. Um, 
That's that's also like super dumb because that's not it works at all. But let's um let's uh Oh, can I actually do this? Hold it? No, I can't. Hold it. You know, that's something we mean to ask. Hmm? What is it? Why are you call the victim Jim? When you clear his name is Buddy Faith. Isn't it obvious? Jim's the perfect name for my companion. Um... <laughs> Jackson Jim. Don't those two names go to bed like peanut butter and jam? But Jim is even close to the guy's real name. Well, Jackson's body just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was a third of the bunch of guys that decided to name Jim, name, nickname Jim. <laughs> he talked about the victim like he was his pet. Do you really think it was necessary to heave my shelves twice to do that? That's true. Okay, then maybe his real tent was theft. Hey, are you accusing me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth? It's a possibility. Maybe your salary has been cut so much in your li that life is getting a little too rough to handle. I'll have you know that I eat three squares meals a day every day, pal. Okay, so all of them happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor thing. What an evil prosecutor you were paired up with. And what a motive, no? Hold <laughs> it! And why would Detective Dom the Gumshoe do such a thing? Because the body was getting in his way. He had a match at the bookshelf somehow, right? Anyway. Um. Objection! <laughs> I just love the animation, just like, same thing as in court. Perhaps you're not aware, Mr. Portman, but there's a serious flaw in your logic. <laughs> oh, this game is gonna have an old bag at some point. <laughs> YouTube. But there's a serious flaw in your logic. <laughs> Bringing out the courtroom, in, a bit of the courtroom into this, I see. No problem, I'm game. I can't help but you find it odd. Excuse me? All of the fellow prosecutor would be brought down by the power of his own office. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, oh, you're joking, I get it. <laughs> if you have time to laugh, then, then you have time to take another closer look at this. Do you still not see? If not, may I direct your attention to the missing file? What? That's impossible! What's impossible, Mr. Portman? Um, nothing. The files on the shelves are about a certain case. Well, the killer went to take the file after murdering your partner, I highly doubt I could have made the bloody letters written on the files. It's possible that like, it could have taken the file before committing the murder. I think it's pretty obvious that the file was stolen after it was written on. The missing letters in the detective's name. Where the file should be is proof. Yeah, the S is gone, and there's only this half an H. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of how it is. If the detective Gumshoe really was a culprit in this case, I highly doubt even he could overlook his own name written in blood on the files, especially as a detective who can't stand the sight of blood. Which means, what exactly? Why would that make this dying message? 
It means it makes the, the work of a criminal attempt attempt on tampering with a crime scene. That's low. I can't believe a criminal trying to pin this whole thing on me, sir. I'm gonna get him, sir. You'll see. I'm gonna have him under arrest in no time. Well, Mr. Portsman. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely splendid. Logic deserving of Olympic gold. I appreciate your praise, but it doesn't fact change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Eh, you win some, you lose some. That's how life goes. Glad everyone's so cheering. Even though I feel more dead than alive. <laughs> ah, but you know, it really is a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however. <laughs> What is it this time? Are you still after me, pal? Welcome back, Kaimo. Humor me for a second. Who has the key to this office? Th that'll be me. But Mr. Edwards has proved that I'm innocent, pa innocent, pal. Please don't undress. <laughs> That's absolutely right, and I acknowledge your innocence. Then why do I sense that you still have something to say? Let's see, uh... <laughs> well, I was thinking, do you know that there's one other person with the key to this office? One other person? Hey, you there! Yes, sir, what is it, sir? You just had to make this weird, didn't you, man? No. No! Would you kindly fashion a squad that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? The girls are maybe to have this building's security. Thinking of her as material witness. Security. <laughs> security? Did you say the security? No, stop it pal, don't! What's wrong with him all of a sudden? Surprise! Gotcha! <laughs> I believe she needs no introduction. I have called upon Miss Maggie Bride, a member of security. D D Detective Gumshoe, sir. Maggie. Yep, she has the worst of luck. Miss Byard is the security guard for much tonight. Let's see, and your point is? My point is that she could have very well have used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the doors in this building. <laughs> what? If you are not a guilty part of Detective Gumshoe, then the only person with access to this room is Miss Bride. <laughs> How dare you! I would never sneak into someone's room! That's right! I believe to re uh, refuse to believe that Maggie's the culprit, pal! Uh... It's a Tumblr blog, some guy decided to go through the Phoenix Wright manga and write Outfits Felix wears because they could. Wait, Felix wears different outfits? Uh, it was me, pal. That's right, I did it. <laughs> Can we take that as a confession, detective? Oh, well, it wasn't really me, but definitely wasn't Maggie, pal. Ah, right, that's a thing. So, yeah, it was me. If you got a problem with that, you got no if was, you got a problem with that, right? Please refrain from flying off the handle, detective. There's no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, detective. He understands what I'm saying here. <laughs> that girl is the only one who could have committed the crime. And for one simple reason. It's pretty 
obvious that Miss Bride st snuck into your, your room using the master key. I mean, if Detective Gumshoe is the one who opened this door, then that leaves only Miss Bride as our prime suspect. On top of which, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Making it all the more probable that she is the one who faked the dying message. What sort of pizza, Mina? You have to tell us. Oh, and she goes away, so she don't have to tell us afterwards. So you're saying that she used the master key? Incredibly incriminating evidence, would you say? That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then and this is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflex reflexes and reaction time, especially for an athlete like me. I wonder if there's anyone else other than Miss Bide who could have used the master key? It seems that the only way to get Mr. Portman to give uh, me more detail is to press him. Let's get this thing here off. Let's press. <sighs> Are you sure Miss Byrne is the only member of security who could have used the master key? There is only one person on staff on this time of night, uh, and time of the night, and tonight she is it. Isn't that right, Miss Byrne? Ah, uh, that's uh, true, but. But I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir. Wasn't able to? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes, moving on. I'd hate to get sidetracked with something unrelated. Well, what do you mean unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal. But you can't really trust her not to tell lies. Plus, I hate to wasting time. Hmm. Should I hear Miss Bide out? Yes, we should. Yes, there is manga. There's an Ace Attorney manga, yes. Just like there's an Ace Attorney anime. Uh, wait. Phoenix has an investigation as well? <laughs> Not so fast. I too am interested in hearing what Miss Bai has to say. Do I just say we're doing a waste of time? We don't need to hear her lies. I'll be the judge of that. Miss Bide, if you please. I discovered that the master key was missing around 1am, sir. What do you mean by missing? As in, it wasn't anywhere in the security booth, sir. The killer must have stolen it. Mr. Portsman, I believe this to be an important piece of testimony, don't you? <sighs> I can't believe that someone like you will be taken away by such words. I don't mind, sir. Objection. But that's the case. Then I'd like to know, why do you have the master key now? I... I don't know, I quite know. It, it just reappeared all of a sudden, sir. Ha! <laughs> a likely story. And where is your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? Why would you just forgot where you put it and then found it again? <laughs> I never lose things. I can practically guarantee that. With me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone stole it. Yeah, pal, trust me, you don't want to test how bad our luck is. Unfortunately, I can't deem this testimony a piece of testimony as conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, but, but, you still haven't established Madge's motive for breaking into Mr. Edgeworth's office. Her motive? Did we already establish that it was for theft? Let's see. It's also funny because Phoenix's series are pretty much all bonus trials, but in Edgeworth he's literally just wandering around solving murder mysteries. I can't remember if he even goes into a courtroom in any of them. <laughs> uh, yep, sounds about right. But that is also how this game goes. Like, we're not stepping into court. In this game, we are just solving murder mysteries, but we're not stepping into court. I mean, the culprit went th went through all the bookshelves and at least tried to save. 
And since it's Mr. Portman's size detective, I can't ignore the fact that all the evidence to look points toward the motive of a theft. But I'm done taking blows. 